Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You are tuned in to the Vitamin D with Dawn Day podcast. And I am your host, Dawn Day, here to get you excited about your life so that you can live life on purpose and for a purpose. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome. Vitamin D, it's a pun of my name. Uh, my name is Dawn and you get vitamin D from the sun. So I'm here to shed light into your life. And I do this with inspirational insights and conversations with celebrities and everyday people like you and me. Because if you want to be better and you want to do better, then you're going to have to be able to see better. So join me on this journey of living our best lives and understanding and realizing how you are your greatest asset. What do you want for your life? No, really. What do you want? I'm thinking about this because I was working out with my trainer, Latif. And, you know, the workouts aren't easy. My body is shaking, okay? Like, there's moments going on, I'm dripping down with sweat. And I was just so ready to be over the circuit. And I had to realize what I want. And he's like, all right, Dawn, you know, you got five more. Then it was like one more. And then once I got done with the set, I looked at him. I said, you know what's so interesting that you really don't have to say how many you have left. I mean, just ask someone, what do you want? Like, if you can have anything that you want for your life, if you can do anything that you believe you can do and become anyone you want to become, the only reason why you are not that is because you made the choice. See, here's the thing, life, life ain't nothing, but, and really, literally, uh, a playing field of soil in which we can uh, sow these seeds, whether it be with family, whether it be with dreams and career aspirations, any idea uh, that we want to happen, but we have to plant the seed. And you know, I was listening to Earl Nightingale and we hear it in so many ways, whether it's literally on earth, we know that whatever uh, we sow, we shall reap. We hear that, you know, our thoughts become things. We hear that ask and you shall receive. Putting energy out there is what you'll get back. So then I ask you, what do you want? You know, my friend Maite, she hit me up. We've known each other since Howard days. Uh, one of my good girlfriends from college. She said, here's a quote for you to use. Whether you believe you can or can't, you're right either way. Hmm. So that's why I had to ask you, what do you want for your life? Because you can have this idea of what it is that you want, but you're going to have to put in the work. And then you're also going to have to make a decision. See, when you decide and make up your mind what it is that you want out of life, you realize it's only one step in front of the other. See, we mess up when we start the hesitation once we get in the way of trying to figure things out. I mean, take me for example. Vitamin D and Studio E. Catch it. My God. And I guess I'm just looking at pictures, whether I was, you know, at XM when I was in college, looking back to even when I was on the Harvey show, looking back when I was in New York at WBLS and LIB, looking back when I first got to LA and I was on AcceleratedRadio.net. And here I am, Sherman Oaks, California in Studio E, Dawn Day, Vitamin D in Studio E. I made a choice about what I want. And I was unapologetic about it. And I guess that's what I want to encourage for you is to make a decision because you can have whatever you want. And it's like, why won't you do it? Do you realize that you are not going to make it out of this life alive? You're not making it out alive. So why not live? See, we get in this whole thing of functioning and forget to live. See, live allows you to embrace every moment. Functioning just allows time to go by. Catch it. So I ask you, what do you want? Don't tell me. Tell it to yourself. And then after you tell it to yourself, I need you to walk in that. You understand me? Because when you decide to show up for yourself, you give other people permission to do the same. And that's what vitamin D is all about. We're about shedding the light. You hear me talk about it all the time. What allows a diamond to shine are the multitudes of cuts that have been placed within it. See, all these imperfections, all these hesitations, these are the cuts. But when you decide to make the decision about what you want, you're stepping in the light. See, you don't hide. You step in the light. And then when you step in the light, you realize that the light starts just reflecting off of each other in different hues. And then you showcase the beauty. And guess what? You start attracting other people to do the same. And then guess what? They start walking in their light and their beauty. And then guess what? The light gets brighter and brighter and brighter. 
So let's shed light on that, about what do you want out of life? And I want you to uh, remember this quote as you go on your way. Whether you believe you can or can't, you're right either way. Get your vitamin D right here with me and get excited about your life. It's time to dive in and talk what's happening. What's happening in the world around us, within us, forever us. And what's happening right now is technology. Uh, We already know technology is definitely advancing like beyond, beyond. I remember uh, back when there was a time of a thing called a peeper or a pager. Yeah, yeah. Somebody would call a number, put a code in, and then you would have to go to a payphone. A payphone in which you pay 25 cents for. Do you remember that? <laughs> you pay 25 cents for to make a call. And then I remember when it was to 35, and then I don't know what happened after that. Um, down from the to the cell phone, to the car phone, to the house phone. Now we're video conferencing. And in 2021, we're talking robots. And I'm not talking about iRobot. I'm talking about Elon Musk. Um, he unveiled the Tesla robot recently. Mm-hmm. And apparently uh, this new robot, its purpose is to navigate through a world built for humans and eliminate dangerous, repetitive, and boring tasks. Uh, this prototype of this robot, um, it's going to be released next year in 2022. And in case you're wondering, uh, this said that the maximum that this robot can move is about five miles per hour, so you can outrun it. And as far as uh, the weight, it's quoted to be lightweight at 125 pounds, just in case you need to overpower it. Now, if you have some children that are less than 125 pounds, you need to rethink about it. And another thing that I thought was so interesting, when he made the announcement, Elon Musk, when he made the announcement about the Tesla bot, One thing he said is a lot of people were just wondering or just probably felt the room. Although there's no need to overpower it because of the size and how fast it moves, he went on to say, hopefully that never happens. But you never know. Say what? What in the iRobot could possibly be going on here? Um, And I guess another question that I do have is like, well, who's going to have access to the robot? And if we're talking about whether or not we're going to be concerned as to whether or not the the robot can be uh, overpower us or whether we can overpower it, I imagine the Tesla bot will be very useful for people with disabilities, right? Well, if you have a disability, there's a probability or high probability rather that there is um, an infringement on your movement, on your mobility. How does that factor in if the Tesla robot say if any glitch or anything is going on? Um, So that's one concern. Another concern that uh, a lot of people have raised is that the AI has a history. AI, artificial intelligence, has a history of not recognizing dark-skinned people um, as well as traditional female-shaped faces. Now, a lot of people are going on to say that perhaps this is because of who created them. The creators are making and uh, using the prototypes and doing experiments on individuals that look like them or, you know, that can go into their sphere. Which one can see how there's a relative bias of that and a lot of concern. And I was just watching this TED talk yesterday and they were talking about AI. And I was just thinking like, because on one end, I'm like, it could be a great idea. But then again, what if the robot does exactly what you ask it to do? See, there's a difference between we talk about artificial intelligence and then human intelligence. Like I can tell you to stop talking and get you to stop talking without having to put my hand over your mouth. But let's just say hypothetically, If the robot had to say, stop talking, and you kept talking, and you start yelling and screaming, what if it would try to bash your head in? I know that's dramatic, but I'm just saying. Or say, for example, if the robot had to get across the street and say if there was an object, it could probably like reassemble like it's, I don't, not even limbs, it's parts, and then jump over. It's just things that we have to think about that the, the robot, the capability of what it can do and what humans can't do, that may be an infringement on our likelihood. Do you remember um, Amelia Bedelia? That's what I mean about literally. Like, Amelia Bedelia was a book that I loved as a child. And she was this housemaid. A housemaid that would make things uh, for whoever her clients were, literally. So I remember specifically, there was one time in which she had to make a date cake. She literally took the calendar and cut off the dates and put it in the batter. There was one moment where they said, hey, Amelia, can you make sure you draw the curtains? She literally went on the wall to draw the curtains. It sounds ridiculous, but 
These are the types of things we have to think about. And I'm just curious, are you for it or not? Uh, remember back in 2017, Facebook, they actually had created AI robots, but they pulled the plug on the machines once they find out that they were talking to themselves. See, there's a whole other code and languages that goes on. And let it get into the wrong hands that somebody is saying, hey, let's switch this robot up and see what happens. Because you know, folks are out here trying to bootleg stuff to try to get an extra dollar. <sighs> Tesla bot. The Tesla robot, are you with it? Are you with it? Are you ready to quit it? <laughs> let me know. Hit me up on social media at Dawn Day Speaks. And let me know what you feel or let me know how you feel rather about the Tesla robot. And um, here's another thing that I think is so interesting. While we're on this whole mode of talking about uh, technology and how it's moving forward, um, I would say that uh, technology is taking a turn. And I'm talking about OnlyFans. It's kind of a, a change of a conversation. So um, we're going to talk about that and when we come back, all right? All right, keep it right here. Vitamin D with Dawn Day. Hi, this is Vanessa Bell Calloway. Oh, it's just amazing. Peace. What's up, everybody? This is Trey Chang. And you are listening to Vitamin D with Dawn Day. Oh. Recently, um, OnlyFans had gone viral for planning to ban sexually explicit content beginning October of this year. Now, OnlyFans is a digital website owned by a British company where you can post any type of content that can be accessed by consumers via subscription. It is well known for being utilized by sex workers. Now, this ban uh, was motivated by potential investors who did not feel comfortable associating with companies sexually explicit content. And that's according to a New York Times article. OnlyFans previously tweeted, the policy change was necessary to secure banking and payment services to support you. After all the backlash, or should I say back shots, hey, they've now done a 180. OnlyFans released a statement on their Twitter, and I quote, thank you to everyone making your voices heard. We have secured assurances necessary to support your diverse creator community and have suspended the planned October 1st policy change. OnlyFans stands for inclusion and we will continue to provide a home for all creators. Now, here's the thing. People who initially celebrated the ban with comments like, and I quote, now these people can get a real job. What do you mean by that? What's the difference between you and a sex worker? Because there really isn't one. They sell their bodies for an amount of money, but so do you. You get paid a salary because you provide a services, don't you? How much did you agree to sell your time and your body for? Hmm. Since we out here pointing fingers, trying to call somebody else's uh, pot black, not looking at our own kettle, how much did you sell your body for? Huh? We all know that sex makes the world go round. In fact, did, I don't know if people realize the advancement that um, the content from sex workers is giving us as far as with the advancement of technology. Yeah, like technology that we use today. And what I mean by that, we went from Betamax to VHS tapes to now Blu-ray. And now what are we doing? Like streaming online? And guess what? It all started because of the storage space that would be allowed to satisfy the demand for porn. Yes, we all know that the company or the world goes round by supply and demand. So folks want to be out here and they want to check out their OnlyFans. So guess what they're doing? And I shouldn't say just OnlyFans. They're checking out pornography because they want to check it out. And guess what? We're here to supply it. But here's the thing that I also want to make mention of is that not only has pornography advanced the technology when it comes to the how we access uh, videos and tapes, but it also resulted in online payments. Yes, we can make payments online right now based on pornography. And why? Well, it was normalized because people wanted to profit off the online porn videos. And this started back in the 90s. So you have porn to think for the advancement of technology. <laughs> Enjoy your day. <laughs> That's vitamin D shedding light. Um, so can we, can we catch a break and realize what's going on here? That's what I really want to say. Understanding that OnlyFans, um, maybe you're a stand because you've probably contributed. In fact, if you're watching this, if you're listening to me, if you have your favorite movie or perhaps your child is watching a cartoon, well, you got to thank OnlyFans for that. Now, I've been talking about what's going around in the world. So when we come back, I want to talk about what's happening in your world. Yeah, some things that you shared with me. I like to call them quickies. So yeah, keep it right here. It's Vitamin D with Dawn Day. Hey, what's up? It's Anthony Hamilton. It's, 
And you're listening to Vitamin D with Dawn Day. All right, guys, it's time to dive in for a vitamin D quickie. You know, when you wrote in real quick because you wanted a little piece of advice about your relationship, about your life, your career, your family, whatever, however, whenever the weather. Well, Dawn Day is here in full effect for you. Okay, boo? Uh, here's the thing. Um, here's a question that I thought was uh, very, 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 very interesting. It says, um, hey, Dawn, my best friend is my friend's ex. We've been best friends for years. Uh, we just click. Am I breaking the friend code if I date my friend's ex? Because he revealed that he has had a crush on me for years. What in the Pandora's box is going on here? It's like, no, really. Um, sis, I don't know if I'm a, a post to it because... We're well, going to find a lot about views. I'm not in a relationship right now, so let me be clear right now. Dawn Day is not in a relationship. But I'm not sure. I, it's not even that I'm not sure. As of right now, as it stands, right now as you're listening now, by the time you listen to this, my brain could have changed. But I'm not sure that we're all meant to be monogamous. And I guess what that says is that you don't have any claims or stakes on somebody. Now, the reason why um, usually it's like, no, don't mess with the friend's ex. But here's a different type of situation. This was your best friend too. And... If for it hurt for this girl to be your friend and this is your best friend, I'm wondering, and you left this out as to whether or not how long you guys have been friends for and whether or not you've been friends before that. The thing that makes it a little iffy because if the friend, as far as the female friend, was she coming to you talking about the relationship? Like, did you infiltrate to try to make it break up? Needless to say, that's over and done with. They did break up. Um, I don't think it's all the way scandalous because... There is a history, but it can get kind of sticky. Usually people aren't for it, but depending on when they dated, you didn't say that, like, did they just break up? Because if we're talking about a high school thing and it's been 10, 15 plus years, then go ahead and do your thing, Baldy. Yeah, I, I think that's okay, but make the decision. But more importantly, have a conversation. Like people can say what they want to say about what you should and what you should not do. Um, but I think the best thing would have a conversation with them and see where it lasts. And see where everything stands. Because some people may not care. You know, it's a different day and age. People don't be tripping over the stuff they used to trip over. All right, let's go to the second one. Um, here's one. Hi, Dawn. Uh, one of my closest friends just moved into their new apartment. And they sent a wish list of what they would like as a housewarming gifts. I want to get them what they asked for, but it's not in my budget right now. I don't know how to tell them that I don't have the finances right now. How do I tell them without hurting our friendship? Well, I think it's time to reevaluate what this friendship is about. Listen, we just got out of a pandemic. A lot of people are still trying to gather themselves, find themselves, and trying to get their coin together. So um, just be honest. That's one thing I say. You no, know, you live life long enough. You just don't have the energy to be lying. You don't have the energy to be covering stuff up. And here's the thing, if that's your friend, then they probably know what predicament that you're in. And we got to get out of this whole thing of overstanding, expanding ourselves to the point that we're breaking. Because if you break, how are you going to stand for yourself? So I would just be upfront and honest and show up because while they just may have moved in, maybe you can help them move some stuff around. You know what I'm saying? I think the presence is definitely important. And just letting her know or him know of where you stand financially, I think that's something that, that, um, that should be warranted and appreciated. So don't sweat that. And don't stress yourself out because what you're going to be trying to, you know, make sure they place is all together and then your life is not together. So then what you going to, how are you going to show up as a friend because you're already stressed out? All right, I got another one. Hey, Dawn, is it weird to be friends with my ex's girlfriend? We vibe really well and she's a hairstylist. She just moved to Texas from LA and I'd love to fly down there for her to do my hair. Wait, what? You, you ready to fly out of state so that she can do her hair? Like, out of everybody that can do your hair, you want to fly down to her? All right, so the same question goes for the very first uh, quickie I had. Uh, when were, when were y'all together? Is this something that you just broke up? Was this something that was a high school, middle school, college love? You 30, 40, 50, 60 years down the line? What is this? Because I'm just like, out of everybody to get your hair done with, you want to fly down there. But... I think it also encompasses the maturity of the individual. If this person is bomb and I have locks now, and even with my locks, I'm very particular about who does my hair and puts their hands on it. It does seem a little peculiar out of every other hairstylist in LA. 
in the regional states area, you choose to fly out of state to Texas. But do you? And I think more importantly, it depends on if your ex is cool with it. If your ex is rocking with it, well then what you tripping for? And clearly, if y'all are vibing and y'all are cool, hey, I personally don't see anything wrong with it. Um, it did sound a little weird off the bat, but I think it also comes to play just the the maturity of an individual. And if you can sit down and, and have a mature conversation with your ex and uh, his current girlfriend and everybody's cool, everybody's on the same understanding, then yeah. Are you going to be weird if they talk about their relationship and the things that they're doing in their relationship? I don't know. So um, that would be the only factor. But I say, go live your life, boo. Get your hair did. Get fly, get cute. <laughs> um, well, that's it for what's happening. What's happening in the world? What's happening with you? What's happening with me? That's how we do. Um, I also want to encourage you to uh, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the Vitamin Diva Dante podcast. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend about us, okay? And then also, uh, would you like to be a guest? Yeah? Okay. Well, I want you to send an email. Vitamin D at dawndayspeaks.com, okay? That's if you want to send a quickie, if you want to send a poll advice letter, or if you want to pop in the studio and come with me. Hey! Listen, we in a new studio now. <laughs> Vitamin D Studio E. Vitamin D Studio E. Did you catch it? <laughs> we have a lot more and I'm excited. And I also, I didn't get a chance to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for um, believing in me and staying long enough to listen to this podcast. We've been over a year and some change and you're still here because you've probably seen the growth, but you're probably excited as me because I started under a comforter. Then I was in a closet. My first interview that I did, I was in my closet in my bedroom and I'd never, I never, I didn't even tell people that. I was in a closet. In fact, when I was still in the closet, you know who I interviewed in my closet? J. Anthony Brown. He said, <laughs> yo, I haven't even released the interview. I did not even release the interview because I was so hot. And it's probably because of the nerves. Let me just tell you right now. Um, if you follow me on social media, you have at Dawn Day Speaks. You have probably seen my workout videos or my pictures. And um, <laughs> the sweat just pours. So... I used to call them when I was younger, like this whole thing called a sweat attack. And uh, it happens. It happens on a workout. Or if my nerves get shot enough, baby. Don't go chasing waterfall. Not really, but no dog. Dead ass. It'd be like that. Anyway, I say all that to say, I was in the closet, literally in the closet, and I was interviewing J. Anthony Brown. And I just recall of just seeing the growth. And it was Jay that was saying like, Don, why you got those big old headphones on? That's why I got these joints right here. These little things that you can't even see. Um, and if you're listening, you still can't see. But notice, they looking fly because you can't tell they're in my ear. But yeah, so then you know what the growth is about and the grind is about. So that's exciting. Um, and uh, so as long as you tell everybody and then making sure that you check out the quick doses. You know, we got some more inspiration on Wednesdays and Fridays. And did I forget to tell you about the YouTube page? Yeah. Dawn Day Speaks. Check out the interviews. Check out some great clips. I told you my social media account at Dawn Day Speaks. And am I missing anything else? Just you, huh? Just tell a friend to tell a friend. All right, that's it for what's happening. Um, I want to remind you that you know that I'm in the business of making dreams come true. Boop! And I damn sure ain't gonna forget about mine. I holla. Coming up next on the Vitamin D with Dawn Day podcast, I talk with actress Jasmine Burke. Tune in to hear us talk about her role in the movie Karen. You don't want to miss it. Get your vitamin D right here with me and get excited about 